All right, so and to give some context, well, to give some context, to get us started, Newton's second law is like always going to be our starting point for this. We don't even know any other equations yet that have force in them. Uh, there aren't all that many equations this year besides Newton's second law that will do that involve force. I can only think of about two. So Newton's second law is pretty much always going to be what we identify for step four. Um, but we do need to be careful. We need to put extra thought into what is our net force. So here's some context, right? One of you gets sick. You're upstairs. So Mrs. Warnock comes to get you. Uh, one of the things you know you're supposed to do if you're sick is we need to know how much you weigh. So she takes your weight, but to save time, she does it on the elevator, right? If the elevator is going at a constant speed, that's no problem. Your apparent weight will be the same as your actual weight. But if she happens to take your weight when the elevator is accelerating, your weight's going to be different. So she's doing this when your acceleration is 3 meters per second squared down. We want to know what the scale is going to read, and we do have a mass, 54 kilograms. So our first step is to do a free body diagram. We're doing the free body diagram for the sixth student. So maybe the sixth student is laying down. We're laying you on the scale this way. Uh, the earth is certainly pulling on the sixth student. And the scale is pushing up on them. And which is our, how's the scale compared to the same, stronger, or weaker? Weaker, right? Because we have a downward acceleration. So we have to have a downward net force. So our down force has to be greater than our up force. So there's my step one, I have my diagram. Step two, we only know two things. We know that the acceleration of the student is 3.0 meters per second squared. That's down. And we also know the mass, 54 kilograms. The other thing that I'm going to put up here, which we certainly will need to use, is the acceleration due to gravity, 9.81 meters per second squared. And that's a downward acceleration as well. Questions from anybody on my step one or my step two? All right, for step three, we want to know what the scale is going to read. So on my free body diagram, I identify that as F scale. So that's, that's what gets my question mark. Do we have an equation that has F scale in it? No, nah, we totally don't have an equation that has F scale. The only equation we have with any F is Newton's second law. Right? And I'm just going to go ahead and write that in terms of net force. Right? So net force equals mass times acceleration. Uh, I do know the mass. I do know the acceleration. But I need to remember what the heck net, net force means. Net force is the sum of all of the forces acting on the thing. So here, the two forces are the weight and the scale. So net force is just a combination of those two things. So I have two alternate expressions for net force, and I'm going to have to merge these two things together in order to have um, one equation and only one unknown. We need to be really careful about something. What is it? Uh, we will. We will. Do you really? Yeah, Sophie. We need to be really careful about positives and negatives, right? So. That force absolutely is the sum of my forces, but these two forces point in opposite directions. So one of them has to be given a positive value, one of them has to be given a negative value. Do we want uh, down to be positive or do we want up to be positive? Uh, down. Up, because I need a positive number. All right, the up people sound a little more, um, uh, are saying it a little more strongly, so we'll say up is positive, down is negative. Now we have to revisit all of our vector quantities and abide by that coordinate system. So the weight is going to be positive or negative? It's going to be negative. The scale force is going to be positive or negative? Positive. positive. You know what? I don't want to do it the other way. We, we absolutely can do it that, could do it the way you guys said, but I'm just making an executive decision to change that. So my weight is actually going to be positive. My scale force is going to be negative. What about this 3.0 meter per second squared acceleration? It's down. What's down? Positive. What about 9.81 meters per second squared? Positive. Positive. All right. And just so that uh, I don't have any like redundancies, I'm erasing my arrow, and now I'm just leaving the positive sign there to show the direction. All right. So now I think we can proceed. So again, I have two equivalent expressions for net force. So I'm going to set 
those two things equal to each other. So the mass times the acceleration equals the weight, right, plus the scale force. And I think I know everything in here except for the scale force. Follow-up questions about merging those two equations together before I put my variables in. Yeah, up. You could. Like, you, you could. Know, you could do that. You could yeah. use these two to find the net force and then put that value no, in like, for there. That's if fine. We use that, like if we use the F um F of G equals like um, like the F Earth equals mass times the acceleration on earth, and then plug that into the second equation. I'm not following. I'm not following. We're we'll gonna have to talk about that later. Uh so the mass, we know that, fifty-four. The acceleration, we know that, positive three point zero. Oh, the weight. We don't know that, but we know that it's mass times acceleration due to gravity, right? You just maybe put that over here. Weight is just mass times acceleration due to gravity. So the mass is still 54, and acceleration due to gravity is the, the 9.81. And then F plus uh, negative of the F scale, right? We have one unknown. We have all our other stuff. So now we can do our algebra. We can solve for the, the scale for Hopefully our answer will be consistent with our free body diagram. So for 54 times 3, I get 100, it's a positive 162. That should have two significant digits. 54 times 9.81, 529.74, that should have two significant digits, and that's positive. My next step should be to subtract 529.74 from both sides. I'm getting uh, negative 367.74 when I do that. And that's equal to like the negative of my scale force. So I guess my final step is to just like multiply both sides by negative 1. And I find that my scale force should be 370 newtons. So that scale is going to read 370 newtons. That is consistent with my free body diagram because that's less than the weight that we had found here. So we have an apparent weight that's less than the actual weight, and we were able to, to solve for it just by knowing the acceleration and the mass. Um, this is, I think, difficult. This is the first time we've really had to merge two equations together. But if you can always remember that we are using Newton's second law, um, I think you'll, you'll be all right. Sometimes we get tripped up with the positives and negatives, but, but hopefully you'll be all right. Um, so for the rest of the class, right, you're going to work on a few more of these with your force runs, and then we're also going to do the trials for your car project. Um, Follow-up issues about this example before I show you the other ones that you're going to do.